All right. Okay, everybody, good morning. It's so wonderful to see everyone. I hope everyone is having a remarkable uh, summer. <clears throat> it really is, um, you know, surreal times that we're living in. It's it's not it's not a it's not a simple it's not a simple time. And notwithstanding that many of us may be used to this or accustomed to this uh, way of living right now, uh, for the over the past few months, it still is a little bit odd. Um, let's not let's not uh, let's not forget the difficulties that uh, other people may be experiencing, and uh, let's uh, let's get in as much learning as we can this Sunday morning. Okay, so this the new mida, the new trait that I wanted to talk about this week. We spoke uh, the past four weeks. We spoke about uh, kindness, and this week I want to talk about truth. Okay, the, the trait of truth. Now, most of us, we think about truth is like, okay, this is just the normal state of how things should be. Things should be with, with, uh, with truth. But, uh, you know, the truth is that, thank you so much. Thank you. Um, the truth is, thank you. So I'm sorry. Um, the truth is like this, is that um, truth is a trait that must be worked on. It's not, it's not a simple, it's not a simple um, trait. It's a trait just like all the other traits that we've talked about, but yet it is a very, very fundamental one, as we'll see, as we'll see over the next coming, coming uh, a, a couple of weeks. Okay, so we have to begin with understanding like this. Uh, truth is the name of Hashem, right? Truth is the name of Hashem, of God, right? Hashem Elokechem Emet, right? We say this every morning and every evening and at, at bedtime, right? We say Hashem Elokechem Emet. Hashem, our God, is truth, okay? So what is unique about truth? Truth has existence. Falsehood, lying, lies eventually collapse, all right? So we have truth is is stands forever. Now, it's also in the name of truth, right? We'll get, but we'll just get this past us. So we understand this as a very fundamental thing. You know, every letter in the alphabet has a, a structure to it that really defines it, right? The letters of emet are not only the first letter of the alphabet, the middle letter of the alphabet, and the last letter of the alphabet which gives it stability, first, middle, and last letter, Aleph, Mem, and Taf, Emet. Okay? Very important to, 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 to know that. But also, they are all letters that have two legs that they stand on. While, as we mentioned previously, the word for Sheka, which means falsehood, has one leg on each letter. So a shin comes down to one point, a kuf has one le leg, and then the resh has one leg. Okay, so all three letters of falsehood, of, of uh, deceit, of, of lying, uh, in that word in Hebrew, are one-legged, and while the word for truth has two legs, because truth stands, truth lasts, truth is 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 beyond uh, beyond um, uh, beyond the the. Uh, I'll just give you an example of how we need to be the na the nation of truth. Okay, so there is a bus system in Israel that they started for the ultra orthodox community. Okay, and it's called the Mahadran bus. Mahadran means uh, I would say a higher level of of, uh, of uh, I don't know how to, how to define it, but either way, it's it's a bus where the men and the women sit separately on the bus, a regular city bus, but it's a special bus for those who don't want to sit next to men and women next to each other. So they have the men sitting in the front, the women sitting in the back, or or vice versa. Okay. So if the women aren't going past the bus driver and they're getting on the back door, they have to. There has to be a honor system. 
how are they going to punch their ticket? Okay. So they said they'll try the system. And it's amazing. They found that they didn't miss a single payment. Not a single payment was missed. Okay. But in Germany, they tried the same system. And every week they were at a 5 million euro deficit. You understand? That's the difference. We need to be an example of what truth is, of what honesty is. We need to be an example for what that is. Um, there's a story that I heard. I heard this from uh, someone who heard this firsthand. Firsthand. So there was a uh, there was a man who lived in Brooklyn, New York, who um, his wife went into labor, and her doctor. And her hospital was in Manhattan, and she went into labor on Shabbos. So we know that the woman who's in labor is life and death, and therefore you're allowed to uh, desecrate the Shabbos for for, uh, for 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 this emergency. So he gets into his car with his wife and starts driving to Manhattan. Now, with all the tumult of of leaving his house on Shabbos and driving, right? He didn't bring a wallet. He didn't bring money. And as you know, in order to go into Manhattan, you have to pay a toll. So he goes to the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel and he tells the teller at the at the toll booth, he says, listen, my wife is in labor. Okay. And you can see it's obvious that he's a religious Jew. He's wearing a kippah, right? He has a beard, right? And he says, listen, my wife is in labor and I don't have any money on me it's shabbat it's the holy day of sabbath it's only because it's an emergency that i can drive on shabbat he says i will come back and pay you the money right after shabbat i will pay you the money i will pay this toll the person says no problem you can go so he goes he goes to the hospital after shabbos after shabbos he pulls up to the he, he, he gets money from someone at the hospital on his drive back home and he stops at the at the toll booth and he says to them uh so i think i think on the way out you don't pay you maybe you do pay on that tunnel either way so he at, at when he gets back to the to the to the to the um to the tellers he gives them double payment and he starts to explain the person says to him and he says you don't need to explain he says you don't need to explain he says the teller told me that an Orthodox Jew passed by without paying, and he said he's going to come back and pay. And I had no question that you'd be honest and come back and pay, right? Is it a boy or a girl? That was the question, right? And that's the way we need to be. Now, sadly, we don't always get that. We always get a a a, a, uh, a Bernie Madoff rap where there's an individual who does something which is dishonest, and we get like the entire Jewish people are dishonest and that's not what we need to be. We need to be honest people. I want you to know that um, a great rabbi, Rabbi Yaakov Kamenetsky, I, I heard the story, um, an amazing story. He went to the bank once and he needed to pull out some cash, a hundred dollars. So the teller, he's not here. Say hello to everybody. Okay, the dog is not here now, but soon the doggy will come. You want me to call you when the doggy comes? Okay, maybe soon the dog doggy will come. So, um, so, uh, so the teller gives him uh, his money. He wanted a hundred dollars out of his account in cash. So, teller gives him his hundred dollars, puts it in an envelope. And there he goes. He goes home and he counts the the money, and he sees that instead of it being a hundred dollars, it was a hundred and five dollars. So he goes back to the bank and waits for his teller, and he tells his teller, "I'm I'm sorry, but I think you made a mistake because I counted the money, and there was a hundred and five dollars, not a hundred dollars." So she says, "Aha! Now I see." that people were telling the truth about you. 
she said, because everyone was telling me, you know who that man is? He's a great rabbi, right? He's a very holy man. And I figured I was just going to test you. Let's see if you're really holy. Let's see if you're really truthful. Let's see if you're truly honest. And behold, I see that what they said was true, right? It's a very, very interesting story. Um, it's, it's, it's amazing that they said there was once a, a man who came to his rabbi and told his rabbi, he was somehow asking his question to the rabbi and told the rabbi, you know, he, that he runs a cash business. Now, what's the benefit of running a cash business, right? Nobody knows what you do, right? There's no records. Everything's cash, right? That's not a benefit, but it's a, the rabbi couldn't believe it. The rabbi says, what? What? He says a Torah Jew running a cash business and avoiding taxes? He says, how's that possible? How is it possible that a, that a Torah Jew can perform business in a dishonest way, in a way that he doesn't have to pay taxes, in a way that's against the law? He couldn't understand it, right? And reprimanded the individual. So dishonesty is usually linked with uh, a desecration of God's name. And the effect... Um, the effect... When a person, conversely, is honest, is a great, great kiddush Hashem, a great sanctification of God's name. It's very, very important that we understand that the Torah tells us, the Torah tells us that um, the first question, the Talmud says this, the first question that's asked of a person when we move on to the next world and we're in front of the heavenly judgment court is whether or not we handled business honestly. Did we perform our business honestly, right? It was a very interesting story of how it, what it means to really be honest in every area of life. I mean, to really be honest. What does it mean to really be honest? So there's a fascinating story that's told about Rabbi Yaakov Kamenetsky, and he was known as, a, as, a, as a, an example of what it means to be an honest person. So he was once... He was once interviewed, I think I may have mentioned this story uh, previously, but he was once um, interviewing for a job. This is back in Europe, I believe. And he met with the rabbi, the outgoing rabbi, prior to his interview. And the rabbi asked him, so tell me, what, is, what, what are you going to say? And he told him, he told him over the idea, the thought that he was going to share with them in his sermon, in his interview sermon, Saturday morning, Shabbos morning. And uh, the rabbi said, listen, if you say this Bar Torah, you've got the job. It's yours. He says, I'm telling you, they're going to love it. And this is going to, this is it. You're going to get the job. Sure enough, comes Shabbos morning. The rabbi interviewing says his speech, and it's not the same speech. And he didn't get the job. So the rabbi tells him, what's wrong with you? He says, I told you, say that speech and you have the job. He says, I'll tell you why I didn't say it. He says, because they interviewed me. They want to get a sample of what they would get every week. That lecture that I told you is not a class. They would, is not a lecture they would get every week. It's not a sermon they would get every week. Because that's a sermon I had many, many months to prepare. They want to see a sermon that I have just a few hours to prepare. Right? And I needed to deliver honesty. So I gave them a, a, a sermon that I only prepared for a few hours. Not one that I have six months of preparation. I can think of great stories and great examples and great, right? So I had to give them something which was honest. Based on the honesty that I portrayed, they're not interested, so I'm not right fit for them, right? To be honest in every, in every area of life. Now, there's another area of honesty, which is to be mode al haemet, which means to be uh, uh, admitting to the truth. And you know why we are called Yehudim? We're called Jews. We are called Jews because of Judah. Judah was confronted by his daughter-in-law, Tamar. And she said, it was you who was with me and who made me pregnant. Right? And what did Yehudah say in front of everybody? He was about to kill her for adultery. And Yehuda said, what? That's true. It was me. He admitted 
his wrong. That is why we get the name as Jews. To identify for us the importance of truth in every area of life. To admit when we're wrong. We took the name Yehudim, Jews, from Judah, from Yehuda. It's really an amazing thing, right? It's another thing is also admitting to the truth when someone else brings it out to us. I'll give you an example. If someone else points out something to us, and it's some, not always pleasant for us to admit our guilt, admit our mistake or our wrongdoing, right? It's very, very, right? But what's if it's a child? What's if it's someone who is much younger than us? What's if it's someone who we don't necessarily think of so highly, right? So many times it's like, we don't like the person, so we're not going to accept it. But we really want the truth. Are we willing to accept truth, even if it's not from a right source, from the most ideal source? Many, many times we're not willing to, right? But if a person is being truthful, if the greatest value is the value of truth, then it doesn't make a difference who it's from. Okay? So, so the Talmud says another amazing thing. Someone who prays before the Almighty and his thoughts are elsewhere, anything else than standing in front of the Almighty and talking to him, it's called a no emet. It's not truthful. What do you mean it's not truthful? It's not truthful. If you stand in front of a person and you don't tell them, right, and you're not, right, it, it, it's almost like today, you could be here, right, you could be talking to someone and you're, yeah, yeah, what, yeah, yeah, right, that's the same thing as lahavdil, not to compare between holy and unholy, standing in front of the Almighty and not really being there. I'm talking to someone else or I'm thinking of different thoughts. If I'm not thinking of my relationship with Hashem, if I'm not thinking of my conversation I'm having right now in front of the Almighty, then it's not truthful. That's the definition that they give. It's not truth. He says, one of the things that we pray every single morning, we say, You should purify our hearts to serve you with truth. Right? We don't say to serve you with love. We don't say to serve you with kindness. We don't no to serve you with truth. What does it mean to serve you with truth? It means that that truth dominates the relationship. That we're not uh, we're not like we mentioned previously. Um, we're not uh, flatterers. Where we say one thing but but mean another thing. We're not false uh, people. Where we 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 don't convey the truth that's in our heart. Right? We are truthful people. And we need to always be people of truth. Okay? When we pray, we pray for truth. We want to have truth in our life. Okay? It's an amazing thing. We ask in the Torah, the Torah gives us commandments. It's an interesting thing. In the Torah, it doesn't say to not be dishonest. It doesn't say that anywhere in the Torah. But rather it says, Midvar Sheker Tircha. From something of falsehood, stay distant. Stay far. It should say, right? Thou shalt not murder. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not lie. It doesn't say that. It says, distance yourself from all falsehood. Right? Shouldn't it be more direct? Shouldn't it be more direct and just say, Right? Just say, don't lie. It doesn't say that. It says, distance yourself from all falsehood. Midvar sheker tircha. Right? From any falsehood, distance yourself. Because anything that has any element of falsehood, be distant. I want to share with you an amazing story. Rabbi Aaron Cutler, the leader of the Lakewood Yeshiva, which is the largest yeshiva in America, in Lakewood, New Jersey, started off with 10, 20 students. Today you have about 6,000 yeshiva students, married and single, who learn there every single day. It's an unbelievable uh, 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 unbelievable world of Torah going on over there. So,
So he says, uh, so, so he asks, they were, they were sending out a mailer to raise funds to the yeshiva. So he asked the, 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 uh, the printer to print a picture of the building of the yeshiva. So the printer shows him a draft and he looks at the draft and he says, what's this? He says, this is a picture of the building. He says, but what's that tree over there? He says, they just put a tree there so it should look nice. He says, but that's not true. There's no tree there, right? There's no, that tree is not there. Take it off and, re- and, 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 print, and print the envelope, right, without that, without, that, uh, without that tree, right? What's the big deal? It has a tree. It doesn't have a tree, right? What, what's the big deal? You know what the deal is? It's not true. And in, in a world where we strive to connect to Hashem in a world, in, in a life of truth, even one little tree, one little, little thing, if it's not truthful, we want to distance ourselves from anything having to do with um, um, from anything of falsehood. Um, so Rabbi? Yes. Okay. Sticky question. Sure. How do you feel about little white lies that will sh- say that will spare someone's feelings? You know, how does this dress look on me? You wouldn't say, oh my God, it's just so awful. Why did you ever buy it? Right. You know, how do you feel about little white lies? Uh, it's a very good question. The the uh, the Talmud says that there are certain exceptions where you're allowed to lie. You're allowed to lie. Okay. You want to know what they are? Yes, please. Okay. The Talmud says I'm going to try to find it here in my notes um, that you're allowed to lie. Number one for peace. Okay. You're allowed to lie for peace. If by saying truth it's going to cause a war or a fight, then you're allowed to to uh, to. That doesn't mean that a person, God forbid, who does something dishonest and his wife confronts him and he says, "I'm just going to lie so that we have peace," right? That that's not. It's not a. It's not a a blanket uh, uh, release from all truth, you know, because it's a, you know it, it potentially can hurt anybody. So I'm just going to always lie. Right, that's that, that's not. We're talking about like you're saying, like a white lie, right? Like you know what? There's the, we have to find the right way to say things truthfully without harming someone, right? Correct. When you're asking about that dress, right? So you're saying someone asked, "How do I look in this dress?" Right? So, you know, I'll tell you, my daughter, I, I'm I'm very bad. One of the reasons I try to wear only black and white, okay, <laughs> because. because I, I'm not good with matching clothes. So when I used to wear colored shirts, I had to get a right tie and a right jacket. And I'm just, I'm really awful at it. I, I just, that file is corrupted in, in my, in my hard drive. Okay. So it's like, I just don't know how to do it. So um, I asked my children, right? My wife, my children. So now my son, my youngest son today, I told you I was wearing my father's day, my father's day tie. Right. But, um, uh, typically, I can wear any tie because it doesn't make any difference. It's a white shirt that doesn't really need to match anything, right? And that makes it easier for me. So, but I remember one time, my I asked my daughter. She was six or seven years old. I think it was six years old. And I mm-hmm. said to her, I said to her, Vira, how does this tie look with this shirt, with this thing, so she, with this jacket? So she said, it's a beautiful tie. But let me find the tie that matches better. <laughs> so I think that it's perfectly honest. It's complimenting, right? And it's truthful, but it's not insulting either, right? There is a way that a person, and you have to know the person who's asking you. If someone asks you, does this look good on me? And you know that all they want is affirmation. They don't really care your opinion, right? Mm-hmm. right? So you could say you look good in everything. Right? right? You can say that. There's a way to say things that doesn't have to be a lie, that doesn't have to be without truth. Right? You look fantastic. You're always pretty. You're always beautiful. And, 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 that's, and that's that. Right? Um, 
the, the, we have to be very, very careful from hurting people's feelings because it's a, it's, it's a general tendency that people who are have this mida, this trait of truth, where truth is their their driving force. So what they have is is that they have no filter on that truth, and it becomes very, very difficult for people around them to to deal with it because when they see something, they say, you know, that's really ugly. <laughs> They'll say it exactly without any filter because their truth is so dominating as a trait. It's not that you're trying to hurt someone. They don't want to hurt anyone. But it's a very dominating trait. And when someone has that, they sometimes are rough around the edges. And people think, oh, that's obnoxious. How can someone talk like that? How can someone say that? And really, all they're doing is sharing truth. You ask me, I'm telling you. What do you want from me? Right? And it's just sometimes comes out not nice right you can't say that to people you can't hurt people like that right and that's not their intention their intention is not to hurt anyone but they just have this this element of truth that doesn't allow them to you know to be in it to, to to say something which is not um, which is not 100 percent true truthful um so i don't know if i answered your question but that that's what, what are the other, you said peace what are the other areas where you're allowed okay, to so there's another one is that if you know that there are people who are going to take advantage of someone so if there are for example if there are homeless people or people who are poor who are looking for some place to eat and you know that if you introduce them to this this host uh, this host will be taken advantage of them so this is one of the exceptions where if they ask you tell me how's the food at their house you're allowed to say that the food is not good. <laughs> protect them, to protect them from their own right, from 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 being taken advantage of, which is a very interesting exception. There's another exception I don't remember off the top of my head, um, but that's those are two of the three exceptions. Um, you can't just go out there and just uh, say something which is not truthful because you know you know because. Just random, give a random excuse as to why you justify that, right? It, it, a person has to be very, very careful, okay? Um, I'll tell you an amazing story. My father is a person of truth, by the way. That's his midah. His midah is the midah of truth. That's his primary, his top of his pyramid, midah. The top midah of my father is truth. And um, my father when he was leaving one of his first jobs, uh, he was going on his own. And his last day at work, a Friday afternoon, he goes into his employer's office and he's saying goodbye. He says, but I need to ask you for forgiveness. And the employer says, oh, let me hear. Okay, what did you steal from me? My father says, you know, I may, you know, you pay me uh, an hourly wage and I may have taken a phone call from my wife, right? Uh, during work hours. And um, even though I was very, very careful not to, but um, I, I just want to ask forgiveness if I may have not been 100% on all my time. And he says, I may have had a pencil for my, for my work that may have fallen into my bag and taken it home for work and not brought it back. Um, he says, I want, I want to, he says, oh, that, that's fine. He says, I thought you, I thought you stole real things from me, right? And, but my father w was very, very careful. He didn't want to even steal, you know, even um, by the way, if someone works for, for, for a company and they're paid an hourly wage, and uh, many comp companies have been dealing with this over the years, uh, their employees have you know, work to do, but they also have shopping to do. And you can go on Amazon anytime, and you can just shop. So they go on Amazon, and they change screens as soon as their employer walks into the room. Right? It's a big problem. It's a very big problem. In fact, they have a big computer <clears throat> companies finding solutions for this, blocking certain sites so that their employees cannot um, use valuable work time, um, wasting time. So, so that, that's so my, my father, I'm sorry. Baruch Okay, I'm sorry. So my father once had a young, young employee, a really young guy, and he 
he was it was it was just, it was this individual this this guy's young job he wanted to get into the, my father was working on diamonds then and uh, this young guy um, this is his first job and my father sends him out to uh, to make some sales or whatever it was that he was doing and um, my father asked him after it was like what, what, you know just reviewing with him what happened my father says what what in the world are you doing what, what are you doing? That's not honest. You can't, you can't, this is what you're talking about. It's not honest. It's business. And that was the last day he worked with my father. Right? It's the last day, right? Because dishonesty is something that is a contradiction to the Almighty. Someone who's dishonest, right? I'll, I'll give you an example of how this dishonesty works. It starts with something very innocuous, something very small, something insignificant. I hope that was the right usage of the word. Um, and it starts with something insignificant, and then it goes to something much bigger, right? Bernie Madoff started off with just rounding errors. Eh, it's just 60 cents, big deal. $60, big deal. $600, big deal. It's, it's just like, you know, cheat a little bit here on my taxes, cheat a little here. Right? And before you knew it, it was sixty billion dollars. You think one day he just woke up and said, "That's it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna steal sixty billion dollars." No. It started with something small, and then that small kept on expanding and expanding and expanding. Before you knew it, it was insurmountable. It was something he could not control anymore. Right? That is the danger of falsehood because it has no boundaries. So, what does the Almighty tell us in the Torah? Stay far away from it. Stay far away from this. The, uh, from, from, from dishonesty. Now, I want to tell you something really, really amazing. And this is the most I'll get to when it comes to politics in a public forum of discussion. Okay? I'm not going to get into politics, but I'll tell you this is an amazing thing. My rabbi would always say that after the Shema, every morning, we say an amazing phrase. Okay? We say 15 different praises of God. Of which the first praise is emet, truth, and the last praise of all fifteen praises is beauty. Okay, so we say Hashem is truthful, right? Hashem, Yatsiv Hashem is is firm, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, all the way to the last one that Hashem is beautiful, the Yafe. The Tov Hashem is good, and Hashem is Yafe, right? So the question my rabbi would always ask, he says, why is emet on one end and and beauty, emet, truth, is on one end and beauty is on the other end? Shouldn't they be one next to the other? So my rabbi used to say, what's true is usually not beautiful. And what's beautiful is usually not true. Right? How many times have we heard, I'm not going to say anything about our dear uh, Bel Air mayor, Right, because he's an honest and truthful guy. Right, he he's although he's elected, but he has his own life and he has his own job and his own business. He's not doing this for he's not doing this to make money. Right, this is not how he's uh, uh, right. He he's doing this because he wants to help out his community. It's very different than the politicians we sent to Washington. It's very different than the, the career politicians. Right, we know that the truth is far beyond them. Right, we know that the truth is far beyond them. And their words are beautiful words, but it's not truth. And when you do have a politician who speaks the truth, everyone complains that it's not pretty, right? So it's an amazing world that we're living in, that when you have people who speak such beautiful, eloquent words, there's not a, min, there's not a, 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 a minute percentage of truth to what they're saying. And when they say the truth, everyone says, oh, that's so harsh. I can't believe they would say something like that. This is the reality of life. What's true is usually not pretty, and what's pretty is usually not true. Okay? I know politicians. I have friends who are politicians, right? They are not people that you would trust, right, when it comes to money. They're not people you would trust when it comes to... to it, it, it's, it, you know what? It's not always as beautiful as they present it, right? Usually, it's pretty far between the truth and the beauty. All right, just a very important uh, note, um, particularly when it comes to politics. But you think about it also in the world of, 
of Hollywood, right? How much of the beauty, quote unquote, that you see is true? Right? Think about it. They show marriage and wedding and love, right? They show that on movies. How much of that is true? These people can't last a relationship for three months. For three months, they can't have a relationship that lasts. And if it's two years, I'm like, wow, what took them two years to get divorced? It's like, right? Two years, they well overdue, right? And yet these are the ones acting in all of these movies about these romances and these love, of, love, love affairs. And it's just like, wow, it's incredible, right? Oh, I wish I had a... It, it's not true. It might be beautiful, but there's no truth there. It's very, very, very rare that you will find someone in that world, in that, in that, in that uh, world of, 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 of acting that is also truthful and also pretty what they say, okay? So people always feel they're right, and it's a good thing for people to feel that they're right, but a person needs to be honest about whether or not their truth is, is indeed so. Um, okay, there's a lot of things to talk about in, 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 uh, in the topic of truth. Um, so let's, let's do the, the following. Um, So I'll tell you, it, it, this links very, very closely to an amazing topic of judging people favorably. Because why does someone not judge another person favorably? Why, is, why do we ever judge someone not favorably? Usually, it's not because they did something awful, but it's because we didn't get a full story. How many times do we rush to judgment without hearing the full story? You know what? Make the question much easier. How many times did someone else judge us without knowing the full story? And we say, whoa, 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 whoa. Just wait a second. If you just listen to the whole story, they're like, yeah, yeah, there's always a story. There's always some another part of the story. Yeah, yeah. And right? people just rush to judgment. But is that truth? Is that truth? Right? We don't like when people judge us without knowing the full story, without knowing the full truth. Maybe it's the right thing for us to reciprocate and not judge others without knowing the full truth. Right? To which it's very funny that the, the Mishnah doesn't, it tells us one time, don't judge your friend till you're standing in their place. Don't judge your fellow till you're in their standing in their place. But it also says. Judge every person favorably. But when it says that, what does it say? It says judge the whole person favorably. Meaning, you've got to invest. If you're ready to judge, judge the whole person. You cannot judge just a specific snippet of information that you may have. It's very important to remember that if a person wants to judge someone, they have to get the full story. And it's not always an easy thing, right? So what the Torah is telling us, because the, what the Mishnah is telling us, that because we don't get always the full story, so we're not standing in their place, so guess what? Don't judge them. And this goes from anyone as closest to our spouse, to our children, to our friends, to our neighbors, to our relatives. We can judge by a story we read in the paper. How many things were written about us that weren't true, they weren't accurate? And people can make assumptions from those from those writings. I know that many, many times I've seen articles knowing a story 100% from, from, from being in the story that were not accurate. And you can come up with assumptions that are pretty crazy. It sells papers because it's a, it's, it's a story. But how many times is the story accurate and truthful? Right? I can tell you so many times where I've been interviewed, right? Where it, it, it's nothing, you know, consequential. It's not. It, it, it's something which is which is not going to make a difference here or there. It's just not true. This is not what I said, right? But they put it in, right? We have to know 
that um, that that truth is a very very important uh, foundation in Judaism. Truth is something which is not not interchangeable. It's not something that we can just say. You know what? Today I'm off on the truth. So today is going to be my day that I. That doesn't work. That doesn't work in Judaism. In Judaism, we need to always ensure that Hashem Elokeichem Emet. That just as we have a God, a Creator of heaven and earth, whose name is Truth, we, if we want to bring God into our lives, we need to have those elements of truth as well. Okay, so I, I'm, 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 I, I want to stop here. Um, we, I think we had a, 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 a very nice. What's, well, I'm missing some. Oh, that's a very interesting uh, point that Lily's bringing up. Um, that we say in the in the uh, in the Talmud, there's a discussion between Shammai and Hillel. What should you tell a bride? Right, going back to your question, Ron. Right, what should you tell a bride? So Shammai says, "Kala kamos shehi." Right, you tell a bride exactly the way she is. Right, Hillel says, "No." Kala no You have to say that she's pretty and she's beautiful. One second. But what's if that's not true? Right? You have to, right? So here's the amazing thing. Shammai is not telling you to be ruthlessly truthful. Shammai is telling you to find something truthful and focus on that. For example, she's an unbelievable cook. She's such a dedicated friend. Don't lie, is what Shammai is saying. Hillel is saying that every person is beautiful. Means Hillel is saying, you're not lying by saying that she's beautiful. You're reaffirming someone else's belief. You understand? You're not lying because her groom thinks she's beautiful. Her parents think she's beautiful. See, what you do is you just reaffirm their feelings. But you're not lying. Okay? So, so what you're doing is, went back to your question about, about uh, uh, the dress, how do I look in this dress? You look fantastic. You look amazing. All right? And it's not a lie. The dress may be awful. And you have to know who the person is, whether or not they can handle that. Right, but you always look beautiful. Right? So being truthful doesn't mean you become nasty. You have to be truthful and be sensitive and delicate with people's feelings, with people's emotions, with people's uh, with people's dignity, with people's pride. Right? There's a way to be truthful and not be offensive. Okay? So we'll stop here. Have an amazing week, everybody. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to start my week on a high. So thank you. And um, it's great to see everyone. I, Lily, I hope I answered your question. You're, you're on you're on mute. Yes, you did. Okay, thank great. You. Were you referring to that? Yes. Okay, Absolutely. great. Yes. Absolutely. So that, that's the idea. And that's how our sages resolve that. Um, so to our friends online, thank you so much for joining us.